so um, <clears throat> in the spirit of uh, in the spirit of January, um, I thought I'd talk a little bit tonight about um, um, how we can sustain a mindfulness. Um, however, I don't think it's particularly helpful to look at this in terms of it being a kind of New Year's resolution type thing. Um, apart from anything else, have you noticed how they don't usually last? But actually, it's an interesting question of why they don't usually last. Um, and um, my theory, at least, is that they don't last because, because most, um, most New Year's resolutions are, uh, they happen at the level of concept. They're just an idea. They might be a good idea, but they're just an idea that we come up with in our in our heads, um, and then we try to sort of mould ourselves um, to fit the idea. Um, there might even be some willpower involved in trying to kind of force that mould to be met, um, and if this way of attempting to uh, get somewhere seems familiar um, when it comes to looking at this in mindfulness training. It's because it is, because it pretty much perfectly describes um, the driven doing mode of mind, which, which is shown uh, or many of us have found to be so unhelpful for us over the um, course of our lives in creating stress and suffering. Um, and, it, and it works. It's, driven doing mode of mind um, by our identifying somewhere we want to get to. Let's call it a goal, resolution. Uh, we come up with it as a, we, we imagine ourselves fulfilling this state and how it will be in the future when everything is wonderful and we've reached our goal and we are no longer the doing the things we don't want to do and we are doing the things we do want to do. We kind of picture that scenario. Um, and then we kind of try to hold tight <laughs> to get there, you know, following what we imagine will, will, will get us there, you know, usually by some kind of behavior change um, that we identify that will make this, make this happen. Um, and um, not only is this, um, generally speaking, spectacularly ineffective, um, because a concept is just an idea, it's just a picture, it's a fantasy. Um, uh, but it's, um, but it's also quite painful because we, we sort of rub up against, um, reality and the, the difficulty and the discrepancy of, um, how we want to be and how we, how we are. And this is real fuel for judgment and, you know, a sense of, um, you know, an idea that we we've failed. Um, so I mean, it can kind of work in the very short. Last, and I'd be surprised if it was beyond the end of January. <laughs> um, so, um, so actually, sort of goal setting is not what we we tend to um, focus on in mindfulness training. Um, it's it's more the problem than the solution. However, there is a word that that we sometimes use, which I think is more helpful, and that word is intention. Um, and um, so to distinguish between an intention and a goal, um, an intention is um, a, a kind of an action tendency. So it is a it is a kind of like it's a signal of an intended behavior, um, but it's an intended behavior in the direction of where we are meaning to go. So we don't set out, we don't focus on the outcome so much as on the process of um, the process of change moment by moment. And that's the other kind of part of an intention is it happens in the present moment. So it's something that we can actually always engage in now. We can live in an in intention immediately, um, whereas a goal is something we try to get to in the future. Um, so, um, rather than having to sort of measure our progress against this, 
this sort of outcome, we can simply give ourselves to um, give ourselves to this intention, connecting with our sense of motivation, um, perhaps our sense of what our values are that might be uh, might be behind this intention. Um, and rather than having to, to strive, um, we take it step by step. We move in the direction um, of where we'd like to go without focusing on that end point. So we may have a sense of what the goal is. That's not necessarily a bad thing. It's the attachment to the outcome and the measurement um, of where we are against that kind of progress that in the long term seems to be quite unhelpful for um, behavior change. Um, there's a lovely um, line by uh, Antonio Machado where he says, we make the path by walking. And it's like now, 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 and now, rather than, um, rather than the sort of Google Maps method where you type in the goal and then go, oh, I've got to get this, you know, I'm this far away. That would be the difference. You know, make the path by walking. The map method's good in some circumstances. You know, as we know, driven doing mode has many, many benefits. It's good for completing certain kinds of task, like one-off situations, perhaps. Um, and, uh, you know, completing projects. Um, but when, when our inner states get involved um, or are involved in the process, it's much less um, easy to, to successfully follow that method because, you know, emotions are messy. And, um experience is is messy we're not computers that you can just kind of tap in the data and get to where you want to get to so um what is helpful then in in um when it comes to intention making and in intention following what what's a, a mindful way that we can approach this well um I would suggest it's seeing, actually seeing things in the whole rather than in just parts. Um, again, driven doing mode is a very kind of narrow way of looking. You know, we identify the goal, we see where we are, and then we try to follow, follow the map between here and there. It's quite a narrow process. Um, whereas um, with intention, uh, we might have an intention to, uh, let's say, sit for 10 minutes in meditation at nine o'clock each morning. Um, that would be a, a worthy intention. But rather than seeing it as something we should do and have got to kind of fix on, we might experiment with it. So it's a kind of more of an experimental um, approach. We see what happens when we set that intention and watch what comes up, including watching up the, watching for the resistances, watching for the things in the environment that might be barriers. Um, or we might see what goes well and actually what seems to support this to happen. So we're taking a wider view of success than just did I do it. It's more a sense of um, you know, what came up when I intended to do it you could learn quite a lot from so-called failure. You know, what might need to be different as a result of what I've learned from trying this out for a week, for example. You know, maybe, maybe it might be more skillful to choose a different time or a different place or a different length of time or a different practice. So we remain kind of open and flexible when we are following intentions. The intention is still the same. Like if the goal was to sit for 10 minutes at nine o'clock and we found ourselves not doing that, we failed, right? If it didn't happen. Whereas if it's an intention, we'd say, well, yeah, and that was my intention. And look what happened. So I can now shift my intention accordingly. Um, it's quite helpful to be in touch with the physical experience, therefore, when we are living out our intentions. So actually notice what is coming up in the body, because that's often where resistances arise um habit patterns kind of play out or sometimes they play out in patterns of thought and we can be aware of those too like what is it that that um my mind might be telling me that is 
um, a barrier to me fulfilling the intention. So we can learn from the whole process um, rather than it just being about, did I do it correctly according to my vision of where I wanted to get to? Um, and it also becomes adjustable then, adjustable based on the feedback that we, um, that we find from body, mind and environment. Uh, we can talk to ourselves kindly. Um, so what tends to happen when we've got a, uh, a goal that we don't meet is we'll, we'll start blaming ourselves or somebody else or something else that got in the way. Um, whereas when we um, are following an intention, we can perhaps stay um, friendly to ourselves as part of this process of experimentation. We might, we might support ourselves by saying, you know, may I be patient, may I be, may I, you know, may I remember to practice, but in a, in a more friendly way than, than the sort of shoulds that we usually impose on ourselves. Um, and we can bring our mindful qualities of, of curiosity, especially, um, of accepting the experience of the moment, of letting go of outcomes in the moment and just seeing what happens, whilst at the same time maintaining a sense of framework. The intention itself offers that framework. So we may still have a sense of what it is we want to do. So sometimes it can get a bit confusing. You say, well, if, if there's no goals, then like, what's this practice all about then? You know, why would I, <clears throat> why am I doing anything at all? If, if, you know, like we're not looking for change. Well, we're not saying we're not looking for change. What we're saying is that the attachment to the out, the, the desired outcome of that change is problematic. Whereas if we can rather um, lean into a framework experimentally, we can still practice, we can still have an intention, we can still have motivation, we can still be connected to um, what we want, but we're not, not so fixed on um, an outcome, which is actually just currently a concept. It is, um, it is generally speaking important to have some sense of, uh, um, some sense of vision and some sense of um, practicality about how we plan to sustain a mindfulness practice, because otherwise it's very easy for us to just kind of get lost on automatic pilot. Um, as is sometimes said, mindfulness is actually quite simple, but remembering it is not. So if we can create reminders, again, environmentally, um, the support of others, every time we create, you know, a, a reminder then is, is found, it, it brings the attention back in. Go, listening to a guided um, or following a guided meditation practice is, uh, is an opportunity to be reminded over and over again, to come back, to be gentle, to notice, to allow, so there is still a sense of work to be done, maybe say work to be engaged in over and over that supports the shift, but it's kind of more process oriented than outcome oriented. Um, it takes in the whole context of the picture. Um, it doesn't have that quality of forcing ourselves, whatever the circumstances, you know, like maybe we are, maybe we get sick, or maybe we get really tired, or maybe we have um, really difficult circumstances that come up, maybe we're in, um, you know, um, a lot of pain in a particular situation, and a particular practice might not be just what we need at that moment. Whereas if we've got a goal, well, I've got to do this, and it's got to be that practice at that time, and it doesn't take into account that wider circumstance. Whereas an intention, we could still have the intention to practice and to be kind to ourselves, but it might actually involve shifting what we do, depending on what the circumstances are. The difficulty of that, of course, is, is it creates choice. Um, and so we, it's important that we stay connected with our intention and stay connected with our sense of what might be most wise, which is why it's very helpful to stay in touch with the body and perhaps to take feedback from um, from others.
and be in a group like this, for example. So this, these sessions that you've signed up to provide a, a container to, um, to be in and practice in and share with others and learn with others and be influenced and influence um, with everybody having to some degree the same intention, at least to practice mindfulness, even though we might have different reasons for it. So just by being here, you're already well along the way. Um, nobody, by the way, currently has the goal of signing up for tonight's session. It's already here, yeah? You, you've done it, so you're here. So you can kind of let that one go and just practice now until half past, uh, half past eight. Many of you have, have signed up for the whole year, which means that, you know, you can let that one go. It's like, okay, I'm just going to go. I'm just going to be there as best I can. So you've got a framework, but of course it's flexible. You know, maybe you won't make every session. Who knows? All right. So um, I'm going to um, pause the recording here. And...